Hey everybody, uh, this is Tim. Today I'm going to go over with you all the latest changes that are in Quickstream's 2.8.0, the new version that just dropped. So uh, let's get into it. So the very first feature that I want to go over with you guys is sdf.drop. Now it, it does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's just a simple way to manipulate data and rather having to take slices of columns that you want, you can now select columns that you want to remove. So uh, pretty straightforward. You can either provide uh, a single column uh, or you could provide a list of columns. So it, it's uh, nothing super exciting, but at the same time, uh, it's a feature that a lot of people have requested and we're really happy to provide it for you guys. Now, one I'm really excited about is this uh, sdf.print option. Now, I know how much you guys uh, are very, very much gonna miss this sdf.update lambda print method anytime you wanted to see what your message value was. No, well. Me neither, but uh, this is gonna essentially replace that. It's now a one-liner of sdf.print, and then you also have the option of providing a metadata flag should you also wish to see the key, the timestamp, or the headers as well. And should you want it printed on one line rather than uh, several lines uh, in order to make it a little bit more readable, you also could provide this pretty flag uh, as false. And to give you a sense of what that actually looks like in practice here, so if you provide no argument, uh, and we will always prefix it with uh, what the different attributes are. So here we only print the value. This is when you have just sdf.print. Here, this is if you wish to also see the metadata alongside, so you can see value, key, timestamp, and headers. And then this is just the one-liner version. So um, really excited to get this in your guys' hands. It's uh, been a long needed pain point and happy to alleviate it. Now this last feature is a little bit more uh, subtle and under the hood, and I think some of you guys will really appreciate it, so I really, really wanted to talk about it. So basically we have, uh, as many of you guys are probably familiar with, we have the typical pattern of how you uh, manipulate and operate an SDF, which is in, you have an operation you wish to add. In order for it to actually be registered, you do have to actually reassign it to the same variable, right? So doing SDF.update requires reassigning it to the same SDF. Same thing with pretty much every function that we have uh, currently, right? Well, we decided to make some changes. And that changes you now, uh, for some specific functions, you are no longer gonna require that reassignment. Now, one of the large, largest reasons that we did this is we found that it was, understandably so, really confusing for some people that you had some functions like update, right? Which really is more of like a side effect producing function. It doesn't actually expect you to return anything. In fact, the, the function that you pass it better not return anything or it's just going to break um, or it just will not operate as you expect. So because of that behavior, we also have other things like two topic, right? Which is a little bit more of a side of effect and it's not actually affecting the data directly. So we thought it made more sense to have some of these functions not require reassignment anymore. So everything that you see here uh, are the functions right now that are going to operate this way. And we might also add some new ones in the future. And also it's important to know that these uh, this change is fully backwards compatible. So if you already have your functioning pipeline, you are still welcome to do uh, variable assignment. It is not going to do any harm. And in fact, it's still a uh, important aspect of it under the hood, which enables things like chaining. So if you want to do like dot print here, for example, uh, that's going to work. And in fact, it's going to work here as well. So you can actually chain functions together uh, with this new uh, lack of assignment strategy. Now, there is a really important caveat, and make sure that you uh, pay attention to this. If you include functions that require reassignment and you mix them with ones that do not, and you do not assign it back to SDF, you are definitely going to break things. Well, it won't break, obviously, it'll actually run, but you will be missing those functions uh, because it'll actually stop off at the, the last function that uh, required assignment. So. Just know it's not good to mix and match them. If you are mixing and matching them, or if you just want to play it safe, make sure you just go ahead and reassign it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But uh, we're also uh, really excited to provide this. I think it will help clarify some functions, especially things like update. So that's all I've got for you today. Uh, I definitely encourage you guys to go ahead and subscribe so this way you can stay up to date with all the latest changes. But uh, until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining.